Hello friends this is Chandrakant welcome to Akul Mac today we would like to discuss something which happened last week and it was uh, amazing it was uh, the landing of perseverance or rather touchdown a smooth touchdown on the planet mars and uh, we would like to discuss something which you have not heard so far in the news in the in the google uh, apart from the usual news to discuss this further let me invite my friend from uk mr navel gund Good morning, CK. Good morning, everybody. Space, the final frontier. Anyone remember what program that came from? Well, we're going to spoil it. It's the Star Trek arena. And this is one step further than we did with the Apollo missions and the International Space Station. And now we're on another foreign planet. although it looks like it's already been colonized so not necessarily by mankind but certainly by robots so ck let's have a look at what's actually been happening on mars well uh, you mentioned about the star trek i think uh, it has a relevance here in our discussion today because the scientist who actually landed the uh, the rover successfully uh, on the surface Uh, has an indian uh, uh, indian connection she was one year old when she landed into us and at, at the age of 9 she was mesmerized by star trek serial and that is when she decided that she will uh, get into the space uh, development exploration arena and uh, she landed up at nasa designed the whole mechanism and it has been for the first time used and why it is so uh, uh, ground breaking because they have used the sky crane for the first time on a different planet and uh, all of these are series of experiments which will eventually help us land in future on titan so uh, we should not look at perseverance uh, success in isolation because it's uh, part of is a small step towards reaching further uh, and as you said uh, you know the final frontier the other frontiers like titan europa which could be habitable in future so the sky uh, sky crane is a very important uh, aspect of landing the rover on the surface of the mars so uh, let's uh, share some pictures before we start our discussion uh, navel yeah go ahead ck so this is a very large uh, uh, spacecraft this is twice the size of the previous ones it was quite heavy and it is carrying a lot of these uh, different kinds of sensors um and a lot of different kind of experiments so we uh, we would basically focus on those experiments which the perseverance is carrying and one of the uh, major experiment uh, it has is the drill because the objective of uh, drill is to get the samples uh and study the uh, material which is available on the surface of the mars because in future if humans have to settle they cannot carry material from earth they cannot carry metals they cannot carry the construction material from earth they have to get it locally there in mars so basically perseverance is actually a sort of a scout which is scouting and selecting the area where they can set up their first base and for that you need to get the ground samples how stable they are what are the composition can they be used like a limestone here uh, as a mortar we use uh, on our so things like that so one of the objective of uh, perseverance is to collect about 30 samples from different locations and uh, sterilize them put them in a sterilize uh, uh, bottles drop them at a designated place and uh, then there will be a future exploration uh, there will be future uh, spacecraft which will land in 2026 the objective of that one would be to collect all these bottles and uh, shoot them off from the surface of the mars for earth so that a much deeper study can be done in terms of material of which the mars is made and then in future if people land on mars can they use these material for construction so this is one of the major item uh, that needs to be discussed uh, in our program today level 
Absolutely. And what we've got here is um, a little bit of a Heath Robinson vehicle. Um, we can certainly see a camera at the top. Uh, and if you look closely, that camera can extend upwards and be brought back downwards. The arm of the drill can go to a distance. It's, it's probably got a maximum distance. So that means the vehicle's got to get fairly close to where it needs to be drilled. And if any engineers out there watching, you also know that as you start to drill downwards, it puts pressure on the back of the vehicle. So the laws of physics are still are still happening on Mars, um, if not the same effect as they've got on the UK and in, in, in the uh, in, in the in the world. Sorry, I'm I'm always lost for words with this because I'm just absolutely fascinated by where we are. As a global nation, and I know this has been led by NASA, but already, CK, you mentioned an Indian girl that, that probably wasn't born in the early Apollo missions, wasn't born when the first Star Trek program was put on TV, but was inspired by a TV program. And we all can do that. I mean, I loved Doctor, Hugh, Doctor Who when I was a kid. And you knew that, and, and Thunderbirds. Remember watching Thunderbirds, you know? Hello, Mr. Tracy. And you could see the strings of these people walking around. Well, the thing is, this is now reality. This has become a reality. All of those creatives that put together these funny-looking machines, um, and now it, this is the reality of where we are. And we're exploring a new planet, just like an entrepreneur would be exploring a new opportunity. And everything on here, I mean, look at the different size of wheels. There's, there's, they're, they're there for a reason. And you've got to be careful when you look at this because it is 3D. And by the way, this isn't a, a photo that's been taken from Mars. This was prior to going to Mars. Um, if you look at the, the photos that are, that are coming through the NASA stream feed currently, they're actually very similar to this. I mean, it is quite amazing where these people have been testing the arena. And that's another issue. They've been testing it in real life under, you know, gravity conditions here on Earth. But they've been testing in real life on similar arena as they would be on Mars. So they've gone the extra mile and they've found parts of our planet where they can go and play this is the testing ground. And as you say, the reality is this was parachuted in. It was dropped literally onto the surface of Mars. And again, engineers will be looking closely at seeing all the suspension on here because that thing actually hit the ground with the wheels. <laughs> so, and if you've seen um, armed forces, you know, dropping vehicles, parachuting from the back of uh, transporter planes that's exactly what happened here so the technology is pretty sound but again as you said ck this is the first time it's been done anywhere off the planet we've not even done that on the moon yet have we so this was the very first example of doing it somewhere else so just think you know as we go through this program today not just the very clever design that's been here and the thousands of people that have been involved in creating this particular vehicle and the thousands of people that have been involved in making sure that it landed safely. As they say, it takes a village to raise a child. Boy, what a child we've got on Mars, eh? Let's move on. So the difference uh, between Earth and landing on the moon is uh, uh, simply because the Mars offers very peculiar challenges and why this uh, project, uh, especially landing on Mars, is so, so different from landing on the Earth and landing on the moon. Simply because, uh, you know, Mars has some atmosphere. And the atmosphere is only 1% of the Earth's atmosphere. That means it's like, I mean, you, you don't, you will, if you land on Mars, you will not even feel if there is something uh, blocking the movement, you know, like here you feel the air, but on Mars, you will not feel anything because the uh, density of the atmosphere is so less. 
and because of that uh, the atmosphere does not offer enough uh, friction for the spacecraft to slow down because when you're sending the spacecraft from here to mars it is at a considerable speed and uh, in order to land at a uh, you know softly on the mars so that it does not damage itself it needs to first uh, perform certain series of maneuvers to slow it down and upper atmosphere pressure is one of the key element of slowing down the spacecraft but the mars does not have enough to slow down these spacecraft but it still has atmosphere so you know it is very peculiar because it will heat up the spacecraft and it will burn it probably if you're not careful but it will not slow it down so that is why this maneuver was so critical and so it's a very precise maneuver where you enter and you actually have a heat shield to prevent the burning of the actual spacecraft and then you slow down use use a parachute and then eventually at certain distance you fire up your sky crane and then gently land the perseverance down on the surface so it it is basically series of steps you had to take to land such a heavy uh, spacecraft for the first time on a, a larger planet because moon is still smaller the larger planet with uh, uh, the gravity uh, one third of the earth so i think these are uh, certain uh, Uh, you know uh, salient features of this particular land now what this perseverance is going to do uh, it has to roam around uh, in a crater because the crater has been chosen as a place where they want to explore further the belief is that this crater where it has landed was filled with water uh, many billion years back maybe a billion year back and they want to see whether the water is uh, frozen there in the surface of the crater and a permafrost and can they leverage the water can they take the water out and use it for their own uh, benefit however perseverance is carrying a uh, sort of uh, some new experiments this time and for the first time uh, this spacecraft is carrying these remarkable experiment i think i will just uh, change the slide and this is the one which is the oxygen generator and never as you know that oxygen generation has been going on since 1960s or even before that even during first world world war when you know the mustard gas was used you you know soldiers used to wear a mask to filter the mustard gas so it, it's not a new science but this is something new for the first time why because uh, mars atmosphere has more carbon dioxide and less of oxygen so this device using the electricity can convert break down co2 into o2 straight away so this is why this is so unique because in the past when the uh, astronauts or cosmonaut goes to the space they convert the, uh, water into oxygen they don't they don't use atmosphere to convert their oxygen they use the water so water is a very heavy element to carry in a spaceship so for the uh, sake of breathe, breathing for the survival of astronauts a lot of water is being sent in the spaceship but this device is ground breaking because this will convert martian atmosphere into oxygen and now this is an experiment this is a very small box and uh, uh, this is going to generate um, about 2 uh, kg of oxygen every hour so if this is successful experiment then in future nasa plans to send a huge machinery like this not small one like this one a, a big one a big box maybe multiple boxes so that when the humans land eventually they have enough oxygen available for their for them to breathe your opinion uh, nebel well as you say this is a very small box and you can see how small it is by just the top right hand corner you'll see someone's hand holding it so it literally is just almost like a packing a little packing box so this is incredibly small but as you mentioned you know the the when we eventually land on mars and we colonize it these will be much bigger and there will be a number you know we won't rely on one you know what entrepreneur relies upon one system we don't actually we make sure we've got a backup and more backups and especially in that particular arena where assuming we human beings are going to be those people that are on mars we need oxygen 
to survive. So this is absolutely critical. This is mission critical, really. So it's an important little test. And as we'll see over time, um, this is a small box. And there are many similar type small experiments that are going to be going on from the one rover. So we've seen the drilling arm. We've seen this small box. And I'm now, I'm sure now you're going to show us another little experiment that's going to be going on, CK, in your little I'm, box of tricks you've got here today. Yes, Neville. In fact, I'm not going in detail about the science behind this particular experiment, but uh, this is going to use the electricity from the rover. And there are a lot of uh, fine balances because uh, uh, using the uh, uh, different foils within this uh, device, it will break down the CO2 into carbon and in oxygen, uh, basically ionized oxygen, which is uh, uh, the single atom, and then combine the oxygen into O2, which is like two oxygen atoms combined, and that becomes the oxygen, which is breathable. So uh, it is using the rover electricity to do this. So I think there will be a fine balance between how much electricity will be given to this. If the rover has extra electric electricity available, then uh, this experiment will work. Uh, otherwise, the robot will conserve its energy for other things. So I think this is a very uh, you know, exciting experiment because if, it, if this one succeeds, a larger version of this will be airdropped or paradropped or using the sky crane, dropped uh, multiple numbers in advance before the humans arrive there so that these machineries start working, cranking the oxygen out and then when humans arrive, they have the oxygen to breathe. So the next experiment, important one, is the a flight, a powered flight. Because once humans go there, they need to go from place A to place B. And uh, as you know, as we have seen uh, the pictures of Mars, it's not a very smooth place. It is filled with boulders and rocks and uh, uh, sand. So you need to get from place A to place B. And you need to fly because you can't construct road. So the best method to do that is uh, make an aircraft. The challenge there is usually aircraft needs, uh, aircraft has wings and which uh, uh, glides on air, a cushion of air. Now the Mars atmosphere is not thick enough to hold an aircraft. It cannot hold the aircraft in the air. So that is where the challenge is. At the same time, gravity is one third. So it has less gravity. That means you would require less power to lift yourself but the air is not able to hold you there. So what is, the what is the way out? I think the scientists have figured out a way. One is uh, longer wings so that you have more surface area to uh, utilize the cushion of air when you are uh, airborne and the speed at which the wings are moving. So this is an, another experiment. It's called Ingenuity Helicopter. And uh, this helicopter uh, has a solar panel and it has a lithium ion battery in it. Uh, it's a self-sufficient independent system. It does not uh, take any power from the rover. It generates this power, but uh, since this is an experiment, a single power flight can last only for 90 seconds. So it's like a, a, it's like a trooper, which will fly for 90 seconds, explore the area and land safely, giving all the details back to the rover and then rover will move. So this is how it's going to work. And it's very exciting because if this succeed, we know that what kind of aircraft humans would need on Mars uh, for their commutation. It's brilliant. And as you can see, I mean, look at, look at the rotor blades. There's a curvature on there, which we wouldn't normally see on a helicopter. If you, there is a slight bend on a helicopter, but you, you, you can see these here, these are really curved, you know, as you said, CK, um, there's no air effectively or there's very little air and it's actually got to work with the, the system that's there we can't just create air overnight um, we can't put it in a bubble there is no bubble there so it's got to utilize what is currently there and i'm going to link it back to being an entrepreneur this is the reality work with the reality don't work with perception if these engineers hadn't known the reality of what they were working with there and tried to recreate that reality here with a few tests and bet, I, I can bet your bottom dollar that, that 
just like Edison, that threw away the first 9,999 light bulbs just to get to the one that worked. I'm sure they had several tests along the way that improved what they were doing. So this is a real test and measure. And as you can see, this is just a little tripod at the bottom. Doesn't have to be very complicated here because there's no one going to damage it on Mars. The only person damaging it is the person flying it. That's, that's you and me or the robotic algorithm that we've put into the system. The other thing is testing, of course, is the connectivity between a remote vehicle and another remote vehicle. So there's lots of things that are being challenged here. Um, 90 seconds doesn't sound a long time, though, does it, CK? I wonder how far it can travel in 90 seconds. Well, I think it's not going to be too far, but I think that would be enough for it to uh, do the surveillance or reconnaissance, as, you, as we can see, and tell the rover that this place is safe. There are uh, it's like smooth, you can come over, you can drill and things like that. So there is going to be AI-based uh, uh, decision-making, which is going to work because every time they cannot send message back and take inputs from the uh, Earth station. So for between uh, the uh, aircraft and the rover, there's going to be some decision-making software, which is going to run. Uh, important thing is that this whole Ingenuity helicopter weighs less than a kg. It is so light. And as wow. you can see, the, the uh, uh, the length of these uh, rotors are, uh, is like a one meter. So it's, it's, a, it's a significantly large aircraft uh, with very little weight. And uh, uh, these wings are made of uh, carbon fiber. And as you can see, these are special. These are not something which is uh, run of the mill. These are specifically made for Martian environment. And on Earth, helicopter rotor uh, moves around 300 uh, uh, revolution per minute. But this one, each of these will be going at 2,500. Wow, rotation that's one. Per minute. That's one road. So wouldn't get in the way of those. <laughs> don't put your hand in. Don't put your hand in when those are moving around. Um, you mentioned something that's really important. We need to bring people back to is that this is one kg. Right. But we are talking at the moment, it's eight months away from Earth. So that one kg has utilized a lot of power to get from the NASA the, 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 the NASA launch pad to Mars, where it currently is. You know, millions of miles away, and it's only one kg. But the cost of that one kg... We're not going to tell people what the cost is because, frankly, I haven't even looked it up. But it's in the millions of dollars. This is not uh, this is not a cheap exercise. Um, and again, we've put a lot of faith in lots of engineers that have said, "Yes, this is going to work." And Eureka! You know, it hasn't taken off yet. This little little uh, drone. Um, but I'm really looking forward to the live pictures when it does take off, because that would just be absolutely fascinating. Oh, yes. They are using a lot of these cameras this time, you know, in, in these uh, rover and also in the Ingenuity helicopter. Also in the uh, Sky Crane, they have actually used a lot of visual uh, imagery for uh, during landing, during uh, re entry into the atmosphere and also this. So there are a lot of cameras this time. In fact, there are cameras which will imitate the human eyes. So you can actually see for the first time in 3D, all the uh, images which will be sent back will have much higher resolution. Um, so going to the next thing, you know, why we are doing all this? We are doing this simply because we want to send humans and the target of uh, SpaceX is to send a million men, a million men and women to Mars. But you know, when they go there, they, they would need place to live. They would need place to survive. They would need things to do. So uh, I think uh, human just cannot go pitch a tent and start living on <laughs> like a hiking mission on Mars. So there has to be some preparation. So I think these are all preparatory steps that we are taking. Right now we are in the phase of R&D where we know what samples we need to uh, get. What is, how, how is the soil of Mars? Can it grow uh, our plants, our food? Can we use it uh, for construction, etc.? But eventually, if things are uh, looks promising, 
we would end up sending another robot in future where it will have a 3d printer a large 3d printer which will land without any humans being there and uh, this uh, robot will construct a structure like this and as you can see these are uh, multi floored buildings uh, and they have used the martian material um a 3d printer uh, is basically start constructing this whole thing as you can see that it's layer by layer uh, erected and it will have a opening at the top so you can see the sky probably uh, when you live there because looking at the sky is also important part of human psychology and then it has multiple uh, uh, floors where you can uh, have storage in certain areas you keep your machinery in certain uh, floors living quarters your uh, freshening up facilities study and uh, communication all of those things will be taken care in this building this uh, building has actually this design rather has won an award and this has been chosen so far uh, as a viable design for martian buildings so far uh, it can change in future but right now this uh, design has got an award and this has been selected for uh, as a as a viable building that can be constructed on mars by a 3d printer and uh, all the machinery will also be placed before the human arrives so the whole idea is that we should have some sort of dwelling already developed uh, oxygen uh, uh, pr uh, production plant should be already there water generation plant should also be there so that these uh, buildings can be pressurized with earth like atmosphere and we have drinking water and also some sort of uh, uh, cultivation can be uh, also uh, you know provided on surface of mars so until this these three four steps happens perseverance is the first step towards that i think we are still 20 to 30 years or maybe 40 years away from landing the first humans on mars well according to spacex of course he wants to take a million people there before 2060 so um we better get a move on haven't we but just looking at these um, buildings it's quite interesting that you take one mid, when i saw these originally um a while back uh the first thing they said it's a windmill without the windmill <laughs> <laughs> because it just looks like if you were to go to holland you would see you would have seen lots of these things side by side you know taking advantage of the wind i mean there's no there's no windmill there as such but it's certainly the foundation of what we would see right the way across holland in particular but certainly right the way across europe um it would be just a bunch of windmills i mean i can't i mean i would love to be one of those people that actually steps foot on mars i think sadly um i'm not going to be there so i'm just going to have to look at the the pictures and imagine the movies that that uh, are going to be created from it but we're just showing a little insight today as where we currently are we've got a an unmanned spacecraft that's landed on mars i think it's interesting it's called perseverance because you do need a lot of perseverance to get there and as you notice there's these the the other uh, names of the other vehicles the the helicopter um that's even got ingenuity isn't it right ingenuity absolutely and again that is another fantastic word out of the dictionary that we can all conjure up and we can all imagine as an entrepreneur we need to be ingenious we need to have perseverance we need to be working all hours to make sure it works so there's lots of similarities between entrepreneurship and being that first robotic explorer on mars and i saw a i saw a, a little news clip today where the engineering team that designed all of these the parachute and the connectivity um and even the person that was using the robotics to land this vehicle on mars when they were in happy hour they were literally in a local bar all celebrating the fact that things had happened as expected which was probably way beyond their expectation frankly that everything actually went to plan i'm sure it didn't but perfectly but nonetheless they were really celebrating they were in a happy hour in a bar 
in the US and the first pictures they even saw were put over the TV from NASA. So there you've got a bunch of engineers, all with little NASA insignia on here, all swilling away with a Bud Light, you know, having the whale of a time, celebrating an amazing feat of human engineering. And the first pictures they see are literally put on the TV. So they saw them at the same time that we did. And they said the, the elation, I mean, the place just, it went quiet for a moment. And then the uproar, the 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 sheer jubilation of what are we really seeing here? We're not seeing artificial pictures anymore. Like we've shown everybody, those are not real, the real pictures. These were the pictures that they created prior to taking off for Mars. But they're seeing live streamed pictures. And you can just imagine the excitement of saying, yeah, this is really happening. This isn't in a movie anymore, but boy, does it look like a movie, you know? So this this is a real, real fascinating arena for everyone just to, you don't need to understand all the engineering around it, but just you know, dip in and see what your fellow humans have done and imagine what you can do. How can you help? Certainly. And this is the uh, first step. There will be one more in uh, 2026 and there will be one more next one on Mars in uh, 31 as per the plan uh, of NASA. But all of these uh, three missions that they uh, plan to launch uh, during next 10, uh, 10 years is basically establishing a very strong foundation for going to Titan, which is the Saturn. And these, uh, these are the technologies which will be tested on Mars and beyond would be implemented on making a mission on Titan, which will be sometime in 50s or 60s. We don't know. Uh, but I think it's very interesting to see these baby steps, these huge steps. And it's a baby step for our human exploration, our human race to expand on other planets in the solar system. So it was great talking to you, uh, Neval, today uh, about this uh, amazing feat of engineering by NASA, of course. And uh, it's quite exciting. We will probably talk to you on some other interesting subject tomorrow. No, it's been a great pleasure, CK. And for anyone that's watching, just go on, just Google NASA. And you can see all these pictures coming in as live as anybody else. And it really is a fascinating arena. So good luck, good hunting, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye for today.